Hello, in this video we are going to do an example analysis of a MOSFET multi-stage amplifier, in particular a cascode amplifier, um, which is going to be uh, powered by two supplies, plus and minus 5 volts. Um, I have written the uh, different parameters, process parameters, Kn1 equals Kn2, uh, which is 0.8 milliamps per volt squared. The threshold voltages, VT1, um, is also equal to VT2, and they are 1.2 volts. And um, finally, the lambdas are equal to zero, uh, which essentially means that we are neglecting channel length modulation effects. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and enter some resistor values so that we can uh, do our calculations. R1 is equal to 95.4 kilo ohms. R2 is 150 kilo ohms and R3 is 54.6 kilo ohms. Um, RD is equal to 2.5 kilo ohms and RS1 or I suppose I'll just call it RS since there is no other RSs is equal to uh, 10 kilo ohms. And we want to find the gain, input resistance, output resistance for this circuit. Uh, we're going to start by well, identifying the Sakas code amplifier, but then we're going to perform a DC analysis to find out the bias point. And specifically, we want to know the value of the current, uh, the drain current because it's going to allow us to calculate uh, GMs, the transconductances, which in turn will allow us to calculate the gain, etc. So this analysis, uh, my, I'm going to start calculating VG1 and VG2. Um, which are basically the result of voltage division between V plus and ground. Notice that RC R3 is not connected to the negative supply, but rather to ground. So I can calculate, uh, so I'm going to find G1 and G2 through voltage division. So VG1 essentially is equal to uh, 5 volts times um, R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3. Um, maybe I should have said V plus since I'm not specifying values for the others. So this is equal to 5 times R3 is 54.6k. And the sum of the three resistors is 300k. So that gives me um, 0.91 volts for VG1. And likewise, VG2 is going to be V plus times R2 plus R3 divided by R1 plus R2 plus R3 which is equal to uh, 5 times uh, 54.6 plus 150, which is 204.6k, divided by 300k, or 3.41 volts. So that's for my VGs. Next I'm going to find ID1, which is equal to ID2, so I'm going to start referring to it simply as ID. In well, order to do that, I need to um, figure out the value of VGS uh, because ID depends on is related to VGS. Uh, I have the value for both VGs. It's easy for me to see that the value of VS1, uh, the source voltage for transistor M1, this is VS1, is equal to uh, V minus plus. RS times ID or minus 5 plus 10K times ID. And with that, I can write an expression um, 
for my VGS1, which is VG1 minus VS1, or 0.91 minus negative 5, so minus minus makes a plus, minus 10k times ID. In essence, um, uh, 5.91 times 10k ID. And the expression for my current ID, if I assume that uh, transistors are um, in saturation, will be one half of Kn1, which is equal to Kn2, so I'm just going to refer to it as Kn, uh, times Vgs1 minus Vt squared. Uh, Vt is also the same for the transistors, so I'm referring to it as Vt. So this makes ID equals to one half of 0.8 milli times Vgs1 is 5.91 minus 10,000 times ID minus 1.2 volts squared. I can solve for ID this equation and I get ID equals to approximately equals to 0.4 milliamps. Um, and with that I could uh, find the value of the output voltage, I suppose, which is taken at the drain of M2. Uh, so find the out, the out is going to be equal, and this is DC, so I'm just going to make a capital, equal to V plus minus RD times ID, or 5 minus 2.5k times 0.4 milli or 4 volts. Um, Alright, and we are ready to calculate gain input resistance output resistance to make things easier to visualize. I'm going to copy this and paste it over on the next page. I'm going to continue with my calculations. Uh, so to find my gain, first I need to calculate uh, my transconductances, Gm1. Since I have the same current and the same value of Kn, I have that Gm1 is equal to Gm2, which is basically 2 times the square root of Kn times Id or 2 times the square root, uh, k is 0.8 milli, id was 0.4 milli as we just calculated, so this gives me 1.13 milli siemens or milliamps per volt. Uh, the value for my gain is v out over v in, um, and we could uh, do this just by calculating the gain of the two stages if we want it. We have a, uh, a common source followed by a common gate. Um, and so we could say AV is equal to um, AV1 times AV2. And AV1 is going to be equal to overall resistance connected um, to the drain of M1 divided by overall resistance connected to the source. Uh, we don't really have a resistance connected to the source in this case because uh, it's fully bypassed and so it's just going to be um, you know 1 over GM and so basically our gain AV1 will be minus GM1 times the resistance connected to the drain. So I'm going to say this is minus GM1 times um, resistance is of M1. And AV2 um, is going to be uh, 
overall resistance connected to the drain of M2 divided by the overall resistance connected to the source of M2. But notice that since uh, the source of M2 is connected to the drain of M1, the overall resistance connected to the source of M2 is going to be equal to the overall resistance connected to the drain of M1. And so uh, when I divide here, like overall, basically, overall resistance connected to the drain is Rd divided by um, source resistance of M2, basically those two terms are equal, so they will cancel out. And so I'm going to be left with this being equal to simply minus GM1 times Rd. Um, if you are unable to just visualize it like that, you could go ahead and have done the small signal model, uh, the small signal analysis, and so you could draw the equivalent circuit where you have your M1 transistor, right? This will be VGS1. Um, notice that my source for purposes of AC calculations is connected to ground. So this will be GM1 times VTS1. To the gate of my first transistor, I have resistors. R3 in parallel with um, R2. R1 doesn't play a role because uh, the gate of transistor 2 is essentially connected to ground through that CG capacitor. And so this will be the gate of transistor 1, source of transistor 1, and this is the drain of transistor 1, which is connected to the source of transistor 2. Right. Um, which is the one connected to the drain resistor, RD. Uh, this is GM2, GS2, uh, which is also equal to GM1, VGS1. And, you know, we could just say this is the gate if you wanted to draw it, even though uh, there's no point there. This will be VGS2. But essentially, all of the current that comes from the drain of M2 basically fits into the um, drain of uh, M1. And that's it, this is my output voltage here. And this is also my source to my gate too. And so essentially I could say my V in, uh, which is applied at the gate of transistor 1, that would be V in, is just by looking at the figure, it's equal to VGS1. And my V out, uh, it's essentially the voltage that develops across Rd, uh, well, since the current is flowing from ground towards the V out node, it will be negative uh, Gm1 Vgs1 Rd, which is equal to negative Gm2 Vgs2 Rd. My voltage gain is equal to V out over V in, which is negative GM1 RD. Uh, so that will be the gain of the circuit. It is a remarkable result because notice that it's the, the same gain as for a common source amplifier uh, or for a common drain amplifier. Um, essentially is the gain uh, of a common source followed by a common drain if the gain of the common source was 1. My input resistance uh, it's going to be R2 in parallel with R3, since R2 is connected to ground. Therefore, R1 doesn't play a role into the calculation of the input resistance. And uh, that's going to be around 40k. And my output resistance is approximately equal to Rd, 
touch is 2.5k. So those will be the AC characteristics for the cascode amplifier. Thanks.